Michelle Ray Cheney was born in Lakewood, Colorado in February of 1970. She graduated from Lakewood High School in 1988 with plans of going on to earn a bachelor's degree. However, 18-year-old Michelle opted to take six months off from pursuing this goal while she prepared to give birth to her first child, a son named Michael, and cared for him as a newborn. Michelle did not want this hiatus to impact her graduation date, however, and was determined to make up for the time she had taken off from school. Through her hard work, she was still able to graduate with a degree in accounting from Regis University on schedule in 1992. 1992 was also marked by other major life events for Michelle. After graduation, she began her career at KPMG Accounting. That fall, she married Brian Vanek, taking his surname after their wedding. The family lived in Littleton, Colorado, and Brian and Michelle had two more children, Grant and Alexis, in the following few years. Eventually, the family moved back to Lakewood, and Michelle decided to leave her job with KPMG. She wanted to focus on raising her children and on a new venture, helping establish a support group for teen mothers. In 2003, Michelle gave birth to her fourth child, a daughter named Haley. Michelle was also very physically active, training for and competing in marathons and triathlons. However, she also had goals of mastering another physically taxing activity, high altitude hiking. The state of Colorado is home to 53 mountains with peaks that are at an elevation of at least 14,000 feet, which are colloquially known as 14ers. Michelle hoped to one day reach the summit of at least one of them. One of Michelle's friends, Eric Sawyer, had climbed 38 out of those 53 mountains. He and Michelle talked extensively about hiking one together. Michelle knew that she could not hike a 14er as a complete novice, so she spent over a year preparing for the endeavor and continuing to speak to Eric about the hike they hoped to one day take together. By September of 2005, Michelle felt prepared and made plans with Eric Sawyer to finally go on their long-discussed hike up a 14er. On September 23, 2005, 35-year-old Michelle and her husband Ben went to a sporting goods store and to a Costco to buy her new equipment for her much-anticipated hike. The following morning, September 24th, Michelle and Eric arrived at the Half Moon Trailhead at approximately 6.30 a.m. and set out for their hike by 7. For her first 14er, Michelle will be attempting to hike up the Mount of the Holy Cross, which has an elevation just barely above 14,000 feet. Eric Sawyer would later report that as he and Michelle set out that morning, he told her that he had a bad feeling about the hike. His instinct would eventually prove to be correct. Problems with the pair's planned hike started as soon as it began. Eric accidentally left his lunch and his water purification device behind in the car. When he and Michelle got onto the trail, they made another major mistake. The pair had planned to hike up to the mountain summit via the more popular Half Moon Trail on the North Ridge. This route is the more direct and relatively easy way to reach the summit of the Mount of the Holy Cross, making it the obvious choice for Michelle's first attempt at hiking up a 14er. However, Michelle and Eric inadvertently diverted onto the Fall Creek Trail, which meant that they will be traveling to the summit along the Halo Ridge. This route is much more difficult, and the trip to the summit using it takes much longer. It was not an ideal route for a novice hiker like Michelle. Eric eventually realized their mistake, but did not turn around, because he and Michelle would not have had enough daylight left to reach the summit if they walked back to get on the correct trail. He knew that they could get on their intended trail at the summit for their descent, and believed that this would still get them off the mountain in time, although it would be at a later time than planned. While Michelle was in good physical condition, her inexperience quickly began to show on the more difficult trail. She lagged behind Eric most of the way up the mountain, at times falling more than 50 feet behind him. Michelle and Eric had anticipated reaching the mountain summit and beginning the hike back down by noon that day, and had packed their supplies accordingly. By 1.30 p.m., they were both out of water, a result of both their longer hike and being without a water purifier. When the ridgeline flattened out some 400 yards away from the summit of the mountain, Michelle told Eric that she could not continue. 
Eric offered to begin the hike back down with her, but Michelle told him that she would wait while he finished climbing to the summit. Eric told her to either wait there, or begin to make her way towards the East Cross Creek Trail, where they could meet to begin their trip down the mountain. Eric reached the summit of the Mount of the Holy Cross at 1.42 p.m. He then called his wife to let her know that he would be home later than he had previously told her, due to how far behind schedule he and Michelle were. A couple, Bill and Julia Taylor, was also at the summit at that time. They spoke to Eric briefly, but would later report that he had been in a hurry to get back to his hiking companion. Eric took a photo of the Taylors, and they took one of him. After only five minutes at the summit, Eric left to meet Michelle and begin their descent. Shortly after Eric left the summit, the Taylors heard him yelling. They initially believed that he was calling for help. When they got closer to him, they realized that he was instead calling Michelle's name. During the brief time Eric had been away from her, Michelle Vanek had vanished. The subsequent search for Michelle would become the largest search of its kind in the history of the state of Colorado. More than 700 people, a mix of search and rescue professionals and amateur volunteers, would eventually be a part of the effort. Michelle's friends and family volunteered both to search for her and to organize the support efforts needed to feed and supply such a large number of searchers. They were also able to collect enough money to pay for extra resources to look for Michelle. A total of four dog teams and five helicopters were used in the search for Michelle. Eric had taken a photograph of Michelle during their hike, and when investigators saw it, they were relieved to see that she had been better equipped than they had originally believed. She had been wearing three to four layers of clothing at the time she went missing. They also knew, however, that Michelle had no water and no water purifier with her. Eric Sawyer believed that the only food she had left when he last saw her was several nutrition bars and some energy gel. Another woman had survived for nine days in a nearby wilderness area in 1997, so even as the search dragged on for days, there was still hope that Michelle could be found alive. However, overnight temperatures dropped into the 20s, and even dressed in layers, Michelle was ill-equipped for such temperatures. Four to six inches of snow fell across the area four days after Michelle's disappearance. This would have posed an extra challenge for Michelle, but also provided the search teams with the possibility of new clues. They hoped that if they could find fresh tracks on the mountain, they would lead them to Michelle. Unfortunately, no such tracks were found. No trace of Michelle was found by any of the hundreds of people looking for her. Three days after her disappearance, a group of searchers found a wristwatch hung up on the branch of a tree. They hoped that Michelle had left the watch there to indicate the direction she was traveling in, and that it would be the first clue in the search. However, Michelle's friends and family were able to confirm that the watch was not hers. The lack of physical clues was both perplexing and frustrating. Typically by now, we have some sort of clue or evidence indicating some direction of travel, or where she may have sheltered, Tom Cochran, the search commander from Vail Mountain Rescue, told the press. In these cases, you find a candy wrapper, a dropped glove. This girl had ski poles. Where is that stuff? On October 1st, a full week after Michelle went missing, hundreds of individuals spent the day searching for her. At the end of the day, still with no clues, Michelle's family agreed to the Eagle County Sheriff's Office and the Vail Mountain Rescue Group's plan to end the search for her. We are positive that Michelle's spirit remains in our hearts and in the Vail Valley. She now walks with God, they said in a news release. We are overwhelmed by the numbers of volunteers, their compassion and commitment. It renews our faith in humanity. The most obvious and most likely scenarios that could have caused Michelle to go missing are of course her getting lost or having some sort of accident while her hiking partner made his brief trip up to the summit of the Mount of the Holy Cross. Given how thorough and extensive the search for Michelle was, the fact that she, along with every one of the items she had with her on her hike, remains missing is of course frustrating to her friends, family, and those who helped try to find her. Given the fact that Michelle was only alone for such a brief period of time, 
and could not have gotten very far in that amount of time, in the condition she was in. The experienced members of the search team were able to start their search in the most likely areas where Michelle could have run into trouble. When she was not located in any of them, or during the expanded searches, the possibility that an unknown factor played a part in her disappearance was considered. There were a few things found during the course of the week-long search that could be viewed as troubling. While none of these items or details have ever been conclusively tied to Michelle's disappearance, they do potentially add to the mystery of it. Four days after Michelle went missing, a group of searchers found a duffel bag with a shotgun inside of it off of the Cross Creek Trail. A few hours later, one of the dog teams searching for Michelle discovered several drops of blood in the snow south of the summit of the mountain. It was never determined if the blood came from a human or an animal. There was also an evasive man present on the Mount of the Holy Cross during the search for Michelle, whose behavior could be viewed as suspicious. Members of the search team first encountered him on the first day of the search. He was coming down the trail when they came across him, and they tried to ask him if he had seen Michelle. He refused to acknowledge them, or answer their questions, and then hid from them behind a tree, before finally sprinting away down the trail. Another group of searchers would later find a tent nearby. It was zipped up, with a light on and a person inside. That person would not respond as the searchers tried to ask questions about Michelle from outside. Investigators from the sheriff's office believe they encountered the same man from the trail the following day. They had slightly more luck than the search teams, as they did get him to speak to them eventually. He refused to show them his identification, but gave a name after being questioned further. It is unknown if it was his real name. While this behavior seems odd, given the fact that everyone he interacted with was just looking for information about a missing hiker, authorities say they have no reason to suspect he had any involvement in Michelle's disappearance. The shotgun, the blood, and the elusive man could all be unrelated to the case and have perfectly innocuous explanations. Since there are no answers in Michelle's case, however, there is no way of knowing if these mysterious clues have any relevance to it or not. As the last person to see Michelle before she went missing, Eric Sawyer was interviewed by the authorities during the month-long criminal investigation into her disappearance. He answered questions about their movements that day and addressed concerns about the amount of equipment they had taken with them on the hike but requested a lawyer when asked if he had anything to do with Michelle's disappearance. Investigators have not tried to interview him again, as they say they have no reason to doubt his account, or any evidence suggesting that he had any involvement in Michelle going missing. Michelle's husband Ben, in his own interview with authorities, maintained that Eric would not have intentionally done anything to harm Michelle. He was also positive that Michelle and Eric were not having an affair. He did disagree with Eric and Michelle choosing to split up during their hike, describing Eric going up to the summit alone and leaving Michelle behind as an awful decision. This choice was also severely criticized by other experienced hikers. Michelle was the sister-in-law of a firefighter with the South Metro Fire Rescue Authority. After her disappearance, the South Metro Professional Firefighters Foundation, also known as the 2164 Foundation, began fundraising efforts that resulted in the establishment of the Michelle Vanek Scholarship. Michelle, who knew how difficult it was to finish school as a young single mother, spent much of her adult life trying to support other young women in getting their education while they were also raising their children. The scholarship created in her name is awarded to young single mothers in hopes that they will succeed in completing their education, as Michelle did. <laughs> 